Tonight's contestants are David O'Donoghue, age 24. He's a PE teacher from Halifax, West Yorkshire. Jenny Purvis-Smith is 43, a freelance fashion photographic model from Oxted, Surrey. Pat Everett is 21 years of age. He's a student from Boston in Lincolnshire. And Colin Terrell, age 39, a consultant civil engineer from Winchester, Hampshire. Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Crypton Factor and to the penultimate heat in this year's series. And everything is set here for what we feel sure will be a thrilling contest as our four new contestants try to prove that they have the ability and qualities necessary to become the United Kingdom Superperson of 1984. And right now I would like to wish all of them the very best of luck and ask them to prepare now for round one mental agility. And in tonight's audiovisual test, the contestants will be shown a series of polysymmetric shapes on nine separate occasions. As they study each set, a voice will make a statement about it. And it is for the contestants to decide if that statement is true or false. In fact, the statements will be true on only four of the nine occasions, and those are the four we want the contestants to spot. As usual, we have an example of that test coming up first. So contestants can ask you please to turn now and face your screens and concentrate hard on the example and then your nine tests. For example, there are nine identical triangles in this figure. And that's correct. Count them up and there are indeed nine identical triangles. Right, stand by contestants. Here come your nine sets of polysymmetric shapes. Which four are correct? Question number one. There are less than 17 identical triangles in this picture. Question number two. There are ten identical shapes in this figure. Question number three. There are eleven identical shapes in this figure. Question number four. There are twenty-three identical rectangles in this figure. Question number five. There are more than 17 identical rectangles in this figure. Question number six. There are more than 13 identical shapes in this figure. Question number seven. There are not more than 15 identical shapes in this figure. Question number eight. There are not less than 12 identical shapes in this figure. And question number nine. There are twice as many of the little shapes as the big shape in this figure. Well, with a start like that, you do really need to keep your nerve very steady indeed. Here comes the answer. Here are the four numbers that the contestants should have chosen. Question number one was correct. There are less than 17 identical triangles in the picture. Question number four was correct. There are indeed 23 identical rectangles in this figure. Question number seven was correct. There are no more than 15 identical shapes in this figure. And finally, question number eight was correct. There are not less than 12 identical shapes in this figure. So, one, four, seven, eight, the sequence to look out for on the indicator panels above the heads of our contestants. Let's go through them. David has gone for one, four, six, seven. He's almost there. He's got three rights and six points to him. Jenny, two, four, five, eight, which is two right and four points. Pat, two, four, seven, eight, which is three right and six points to him. Colin, two, three, four, seven, which is two right and four points. We shall now enter all those points into the scoreboard. So at the end of the first round, we've got two contestants sharing the lead with a Krypton factor of six. From Halifax, David O'Donoghue, and from Bangor, North Wales, Pat Everett. <laughs> Fairly even start there as we go into round two in our physical ability, and the assault course beckons. Just over 400 yards of torture by steel, rope, height, and water. You can't get it much tougher, but never lose sight of the fact that all our contestants are volunteers. Right, let's join them all on the starting line, under orders now from Major Stan Meadows of the Army Physical Training Corps. On your marks. 
Jenny Purvis-Smith sets off first, a fashion and photographic model from Oxted, Surrey. And she's very fit too. She runs for South London Harriers and is captain of the women's cross-country team. She's also completed the London and Manchester marathons. Now it's Colin Tyrrell from Hampshire as Jenny comes up onto the high balance. And on the far side in red, it's Pat Everett from Boston, Lincolnshire. Nearest to us, David O'Donoghue from Halifax. And Jenny electing to come down the rope instead of jumping, which of course will cost her valuable seconds. And here is Colin Tyrrell, a civil engineer from Winchester. Nice drop down and into the vertical pipes and right beside him comes Pat Everett. But Jenny nicely over and falls into the cargo net. David O'Donoghue from Halifax has started strongly. So a good race developing here as Jenny comes up towards the tramways. Just behind her in red is Pat Everett. Then it's Colin Tyrrell and David O'Donoghue just arriving on the cargo net. Jenny here looking a little bit shaky on those tramways, but Pat Everett on the far side, pulling himself across. It'll be slightly dangerous, that, because those wires can cut into your legs, but it doesn't seem to have affected Pat, and he's jumped clear in the lead now, looking very good on this assault course. He's a former Welsh University's long jump, high jump, and triple jump champion, and he begins to climb that scramble net with David O'Donoghue looking pretty good here in second place, just ahead of Colin Tyrrell. But well, that can be very dangerous. It's effective if you can do it. If you can't do it, it can be very painful. But now the downstairs technique for Pat Everett, and he's full of bounce, full of running, great technique. And this is the perfect way to run the assault course. Pat Everett giving a marvelous performance here. And that's David O'Donoghue, the physical education teacher. And right level with him is Colin Tyrrell on the far side, so a good battle going on there as Pat Everett comes across the Burma rope bridge. But now David O'Donoghue begins to pull away from Colin Tyrrell. He looks like he's left himself with a finish there, and he's pulling out at this moment. So good performance from David O'Donoghue. Pat Everett begins his descent on the aerial slide. Just graduated from Bangor University with an honours degree. Colin Tyrrell in the water, but David O'Donoghue already on the Burma rope bridge. And here comes Pat Everett to the finish. A super performance by him on the assault course. Plenty of running left in him as he crosses the line. Pat Everett, the winner. Colin Tyrrell, age 39, the oldest person in the race, is hung in well, but it's going to be David O'Donoghue here who takes second place. He can see just behind him Colin Tyrrell. He knows Colin isn't in a position to challenge, so David taking his time as he comes under that net, pushes it off his shoulders, and comes over the line. Good, well-judged race by David O'Donoghue. And now comes Colin Tyrrell, the civil engineer from Winchester in Hampshire. Spends his summer backpacking in the Alps and does a lot of running as well and manages a sprint there to the finish. Great stuff and what a dazzling performance there from Pat Everett. We shall enter all the points, one on the assault course now, into the scoreboard to see how that affects the overall situation. Well, we now have a clear leader with a Krypton factor of 16, the student from Bangor in North Wales, Pat Everett. the intelligence test a problem-solving exercise for our contestants so contestants can I now ask you please to step down to your benches and I'll explain what you have to do well not only has this been Olympic year but it was also the year of the European elections and your task is to construct the original flag of the Council of Europe this is achieved by placing the 13 pentominoes now on your desk into the frame and there is in fact only one way it can be done are you ready contestants the test starts now. And the European flag that uh, you should see taking shape in those frames is a full white E set against green. So the backbone of the E will in fact take up the entire third of the frame on the left as we look at it, and the green section will be largely in the center area to the right. That's Pat Everett's flag. Top left piece is wrong, but he's made a good start. And Colin Tyrrell here, he too has started well, got the right base in. Knowing that the flag is twice as wide as it is high, the contestants should know the orientation of each piece. 
They should immediately, of course, realize that the long pentominoes must fit horizontally, not vertically. Pat has been working very coolly and is doing very well indeed. You can see that flag taking shape. And that's also good for Colin Tyrrell. <laughs> I don't know what someone said there, but they were cracking some joke about it. And, well, David O'Donoghue on the left is completely at sea at the moment, but Jenny is doing well. And this could be the finish. Pat Everett has swapped a couple of pieces over, and that is correct. And Lincolnshire's Pat Everett wins this round. An excellent performance. Now, Colin Tyrrell looks like he's just behind in second place. Yes. Second place for him. Happiness there. It just says amazing. And Jenny Purvis-Smith is going to get third place. Yes. Third place for Jenny Purvis-Smith. And no flagging at all there from the contest leader, Pat Everett, who finishes in the fastest time and gets the full ten points. Then in second place was the man from Winchester, Colin Tyrrell, who gets six points. In third place from Oxted, Surrey, Jenny Purvis-Smith, who gets four points. And fourth, Halifax's David O'Donoghue, two points. Let's enter all those then into the scoreboard. And, well, he's running away with it at the moment, though there's still a lot of points available in the last two rounds, with a Krypton factor of 26. He's studying maths and PE at Bangor University, Pat Everett. Well, the other three certainly need a good round now as we go into the fourth of our five, Observation, a film clip followed by questions and then the Identity Parade. And tonight, the clip comes from Gorky Park, the film of the best-selling book. It's all about murder in Moscow and the KGB in competition with the Moscow Civil Police. So, contestants, would you now please turn to your screens, concentrate hard. Here comes your clip. I can't understand it. The unscored dead bodies in Gorky Park. What the hell are they doing there? That's it passes belief, General. Chief Investigator Renko reporting, Comrade General. Have you shaved this morning? Comrade General, I was... The General wishes to know your initial reaction a to this matter. A fellow should keep hair off his face, you know. Your initial reaction to this matter. Now, what are the prospects for an early resolution? With the world's finest militia and the enthusiastic support of the peaceful Soviet peoples, I am confident we will apprehend the criminal elements involved, Comrade General. Yes, 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 I hope so, young man. Your father, General Renko, who was always clean and tidy, even when he was killing Germans. It's nearly four hours since the three bodies were uncovered. Now, who are they? The bodies have no marks of identification, Comrade Prosecutor. What? No papers here in Moscow? The bodies were badly mutilated. No papers, no fingertips, no faces. They were clean-shaven, General, quite literally. Akadi, you know what you just did? We're missing something. Yes, you just went through a red line. Concentrate. Each with no fingertips and no face. Why? Obviously to make identification difficult. But then the killer shoots the two men in the head. Why? You're right. And he risks making even more noise. Yes, but if he sliced off their faces, what's the point of shooting them in the mouth? What do you have in your mouth? My tongue. Your teeth. Your teeth. Dental technique suggests that the victim is an American. Arcadi. Excited, are we? I think we've got enough to dump this case. I've just seen the report from ballistics. What weapon? It's a 7.65 millimeter pistol. And that's a KGB gun. Right, contestants, turn to the front, please. And now two questions for each of you. They're worth two points each. We begin with yours, David. What was the rank of the officer summoned to the police headquarters to report on the killings at the beginning of the clip? Captain. No, he was the chief investigator. In that room, what was the comrade prosecutor, that was the man on the left, standing in front of? Portering. 
No, it was a large wall map. So I'm afraid you failed to score, David. Now your question's Jenny. What was the very first question asked of the chief investigator? Whether he'd shaved. That's right. Have you had a shave? You get two points. At the end of the clip, in the chief investigator's office, what was hanging on the door? A hat. No, it was a, a uniform uh, and uh, hangers there. So you get two of the possible four anyway, Jenny. On we go to Pat. How long had it been since the bodies were found? Three weeks. No, nearly four hours. What was the plainclothes officer behind the desk holding in his left hand? Uh, hat. No, three pencils. I'm afraid you failed to score there, Pat. But here come your questions. Colin, what was the weapon used for the killings? Uh. Uh, a pistol, a 7.65 millimetre Absolutely pistol. right. Two points. What hole of the dial was the pencil pushed into? Nine. No, it was the second one, in fact. Yeah, so, uh, two of the possible four for you, Colin. Uh, on we go now with four more questions, this time on the buzzer and worth a point each. If the contestant gives me the wrong answer, well, then somebody else can try their luck. So, ready on those buzzers, contestants? Here we go. Two words were used to describe the chief investigator's father even when killing Germans. What were those words? Colin. Clean and tidy. Correct. At the beginning, when the chief investigator walked up the steps of the ministry, how many guards saluted Pat? Two. Wrong. Jenny. Three. Wrong. Colin. One. Correct. No papers and no faces were two of the three. Colin. No fingertips. Correct. What was in the right hand of the plainclothes officer behind the desk? Colin. A dental impression. Wrong. Pat. Umbrella. Wrong. David. Pencil. Wrong. Jenny. Stethoscope. No, it was a cigarette. And now to the moment where all the contestants could add an extra two points to their score if they can pick out someone from that film. Now remember the car trip across Moscow where the civil police detectives were discussing the murder? Well, it's the one in the middle in the car we want them to pick out, and this lineup of nine detectives. Right, contestants, will you make your selections, please, now? And those selections have been made. Let's go through them. Number one there is the choice of David O'Donoghue. And two contestants, Jenny and Pat, have gone for number six there. And Colin has plumped for number three. So let's find out who it is as I ask the civil police detective from Moscow to make himself known to the contestants now, please. And it is indeed number six in real life actor Patrick Field. <laughs> and well done, Jenny and Pat, who both get the extra points. But we shall now enter all the points won in that round into the scoreboard. And, well, the man from Winchester, Colin Tyrrell, is now clear in second place. And he's cut back on the lead slightly, but still out in front with a Krypton factor of 28. The student who actually lives in Boston, Lincolnshire, Pat Everett. <laughs> Well, can they catch Pat as we go into the fifth and final round, General Knowledge? And I remind you that the winner goes through to the semi-final and a high-scoring runner-up can also go through. So, let's start with the individual sets of three questions. They're worth two points each, and we will start with yours, David. Which Chinese river, the longest in Asia, flows through Nanking to reach the sea near Shanghai? Yangtze Kayan. Correct. Two points. In which year did the general strike take place in Britain? 1926. Correct. Two more points. Which popular musical contains the numbers People Will Say We're In Love and Oh What A Beautiful Morning? Got to push you. Which musical? Anything coming? Sorry, can you repeat it on? Think on. Which popular musical contains the numbers People Will Say We're In Love and Oh What A Beautiful Morning? I must take an answer. 
Anything coming? Sound of music. No, it was Oklahoma. Oh. But you get four of the six there, David. Uh, now your question's Jenny. Which river, some 240 miles long, is the longest river in the British Isles, England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland? Thames. No, the River Shannon. During which war did England fight the battles of Cressy and Agincourt against the French? Which war? I don't know. It's the Hundred Years' War. And finally, which popular stage musical contains the songs Another Suitcase in Another Hall and Don't Cry For Me, Argentina? Avita. Correct. Two points and two of the possible six for you, Jenny. On we go with your set, Pat. Which Middle Eastern river flows first into the Sea of Galilee and then the Dead Sea? Euphrates. No, the Jordan. Who led the mutiny against Captain Bly on the Bounty in 1789? Fletcher uh, Christian. Correct, two points. Which popular stage and film musical contains the songs Matchmaker, Matchmaker, Tradition and Sunrise, Sunset? Hey. No hey. Fiddler on the Roof. So two of the possible six for you, Pat. And finally in this section, your set, Colin. Which major river forms the delta south of Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam? I don't know. The Mekong. In the Second World War, what was the name of the guerrilla force commanded by Major General Ord Wingate in Burma? I don't know that one either. The Chindits. Which popular film musical contains the songs Tomorrow Belongs to Me, Maybe This Time, and Money, Money? Um, cabaret. Correct. Two points and two of the possible six for you, Colin. And now to the climax of the round and the contest. 90 seconds of rapid-fire questions, one point for the right answer, a point deducted if a contestant gives me the wrong answer. So, ready on your buzzers this time, contestants. The clock starts now. For what purpose would a motorist use ethylene glycol in his car? Colin. Antifreeze. Correct. Which city is the capital of Iceland? Colin. Reykjavik. Correct. In Reykjavik in 1972, who beat Boris Spassky to become world chess champion? Jenny. Oh, no. no, Bobby Fisher, you lose a point. From which fish is true caviar obtained? Colin. Sturgeon. Correct. Who co-starred with Richard Pryor in the films Stir Crazy? Gene David. Wilder. Correct. In which English city are the Madder Market Theatre and a football club nicknamed the Canaries? David. Norwich. Correct. Which playwright wrote the line Very Flat Norfolk in his play Private Lives? Colin. Noel Coward. Correct. Which award for heroism is known in short as the DFC? Pat. Distinguished Flying Cross. Correct. Which black athlete won four Olympic gold medals? David. Jesse Owens. Correct. Who composed the operas Owen Wingrave, Death in Venice and Peter Grimes? The answer is Benjamin Britten. Which British engineer invented the hovercraft in the 1950s? Pat. Christopher Cockrell. Correct. Buyabes, Kokaliki and Colin. Kinds of soup. Correct. What name is used by Superman when he works as a newspaper reporter? David. Clark Kent. Correct. Grand Union, Kenneth and Avon and Colin. Canals. Correct. Can the Can and Devilgate Drive were number one it's Pat. Correct. The word quarantine. That's the end of the round and the contest. And the winner tonight with a Krypton factor of 33 is the student from Bangor, North Wales, Pat Everett. <laughs> And a very worthy winner, our warmest congratulations to Pat, who led from start to finish, and we look forward to seeing him again in our semi-finals. Our thanks also to the other contestants for making it such a good contest, and that late burst from Colin in particular. We shall be back with you next Monday at 7 o'clock with the last of the heats. I hope you'll be able to join us for that. In the meantime, from all the contestants here and from myself, good night. <laughs>